This video started as a review, turned out to be a rant. Okay, this is Ahmed Warik, but you could call me Slorks, and honest to God, I do not remember the last time I reviewed an HTC device. I believe it was the U12 Plus. I could be wrong. Today I have the HTC U25 G. This phone has been out for a while. This is not the latest and greatest, but it is the latest and greatest at the same time. Does that make sense? Honestly, if you want the best phone from HTC right now that's officially available in our market and region, this is your only option. At 1200 dirhams or uh, Saudi Riyal, you're looking at a mid-range phone below $300, that's lacking in a lot of areas. Number one, it's the display. It says 60 Hertz display only. It does not come with 90 Hertz. It does not come with 120 Hertz. It's only 60 Hertz. Number two, it's an IPS LCD panel. It's not even an OLED. And even in this price range, you're getting OLED panels with 90 Hertz refresh rate that perform much better than this display. Number three are those chunky bezels. Even at this price point, we see phones that have even smaller bezels. Although the phone adopts that hole punch display, um, the bezels are still significantly big on top and of course at the bottom. Number three is that build quality. It's polycarbonate, it's fancy plastic. Um, at least it's not fingerprint attracting and I got it in this nice olive green color. But um, yeah, it, it doesn't feel premium. And then there's the cameras. Um, HTC unfortunately adopted the, the quantity over quality route. We have four cameras here. Main sensor is a 48 megapixel and then an eight megapixel ultra wide. And then we got two, um, two two megapixel sensors. One is for the macro and the other one is for the depth. And honestly, they're, they're not great. This is a shot from the 48 megapixel sensor with, with AI turned on. There's a ton of noise for some reason. It's not that sharp and took this shot from another angle and the color science completely changed. Now it's more warm, here it was cool. I don't get it. Here I was trying to punch in and get a closer shot. This is the two macro lens, which stands up to its name. It's really bad. And then we've got uh, dynamic range issues, sharpness issues, noise issues, and softness and towards the edges of the shots. There is a lot of work that needs to be done. Software updates need to be coming so they can fix the image quality coming out of this phone. I was hoping it would have been something just as simple as, uh, you know, a small update to fix the dynamic range, for example, but no, there's problems with noise, sharpness, this is the best dynamic range shot I was able to get, but then the noise went up in the shadow areas. I have no idea why it's doing that. This is probably the best photo I got. It shows you the level of sharpness and a natural bokeh in the background because it's a huge sensor. It's a 48 megapixel, people. That's a lot of pixels you're working with. And um, this is my favorite shot that I got from the camera. In terms of portrait mode, it does suffer like the other cameras of overexposure in the background. So the blur effect does not make sense. You do have a ton of details in the beard hairs here because of the 48 megapixels again. But then you have the same issue almost with the 32 megapixel in the front selfie camera. You do have a lot of details, but as soon as you try to shallow depth of field, you're gonna get an overexposed shot with a lot of sharpness, which makes it look very weird like this shot. Or if you try to tone it down, you're gonna lose a lot of details in the shadows. And um, yeah, that's exactly how I feel <laughs> about the camera. So as you can see, this phone still needs a lot of work. There is something that I did love about it though, and that's the battery, right? It's a 5,000 milliamp battery, which means it can last forever. With a Snapdragon 765, it was able to give me over six hours of screen on time but it's a letdown from the 18 watt charger that you're gonna get in the box, so it does charge slowly. There's no wireless charging, there's no IP certification, so keep it out of the water, and there's no headphone jack, although phones in this price range, you do get a headphone jack, but there's no headphone jack here. And this is where the rant starts, honestly. I realize that I'm ranting more than reviewing, and it's, it's because I have so much love for HTC. I love HTC as a brand. And I love that HTC is trying to come back into the phone space after they've been gone for God knows how long. It's due to the Chinese OEMs and of course, and of course your Samsungs and your iPhones. There isn't room for HTC anymore. And it's not because there is no room period. It's just because HTC hasn't been making good phones before they actually got out of the game. And they come back with this phone. Yeah, I don't see them lasting any longer. If I was HTC and I was handling HTC, and FYI, I did say this to HTC before making this video. They need to focus on one flagship device. And hear me out. Imagine HTC made this phone, let's call it HTC 21, okay? Snapdragon 888 at the helm. 12 gigabytes of RAM, LPDDR5, 256 gigabytes storage starting UFS 3.1, 4,500 or 5,000 milliamp battery that charges at least 25 watts in terms of speed, wireless charging, IP68, a 6.7 inch display, FHD resolution, I don't mind, AMOLED with 120 hertz refresh rate, 
a fingerprint scanner embedded in the display. It could be optical. We're not asking for something expensive. Stereo speakers with the earpiece, a single camera in the front and a hole punch display centered hopefully 32 megapixels and then three main sensors in the back. They can all be 12 megapixels, but one ultra wide, one telephoto and one wide angle lens. Sell it for a thousand dollars. You're telling me they won't sell? I miss the days where HTC made a lot of sense. I miss the days where from far, you see this widget, you know you're using an HTC. I formatted the device before the review because I wanted to show you how the ideas that HTC had adopted in the past still apply today. HTC was the first company to be like, you know what? We don't need to have repeated apps. They removed all their apps and left the Google apps on the phone. It gives it a much better experience, closer to Android stock, which means you get updates even quicker. Yeah, HTC owned it. I miss the days where HTC explored materials and instead of using polycarbonate, which is just fancy plastic and gives it a, uh, a cheap feeling in the hand. I miss the days where HTC paid attention to a lot of details and would have not left a fingerprint scanner just put in the back like this and make the phone look awkward from the back and they would have actually moved it on the side. I miss the days where HTC didn't just put four cameras to claim that they have four cameras on the phone and put cameras that made sense, like the HTC Resound 3D or even the HTC One M8, where they had cameras that are actually useful. And what I miss the most is when HTC utilized the space of the phone and they had boom sound speakers on the front and utilized the space even better so they can give you a much better user experience like the HTC One M7, M8, or even M9. HTC can come back. And the reason I'm making this video is because I love HTC so much. And to utilize this constructive criticism where they can actually make their products better. I know they're doing very well in the Vive, good for you. And I hope you do continue to dominate in that sector, especially in the enterprise. But I know if you just put your focus and your talent and bring back the HTC that we remember, you can make a killer phone that can last and bring back HTC lovers like myself to using those phones as their daily drivers. But at the end of the day, I am happy this phone exists. It shows that HTC still cares and they wanna make phones. And I hope that this constructive criticism is taken into consideration. And the reason I wanted to bring it out there is because I know that you guys, people that follow me, do believe in the stuff that I say. So I do want you to share in the comment section below. Do you agree about the phone spec that I just claimed that HTC should be making as a flagship phone? Do you agree that HTC should be focusing on one phone instead of trying to make more phones that are mid-range and mediocre in terms of specs and lacking in comparison to the competition? Because believe me, they will be reading and you can be helping out today, bring back HTC tomorrow. So that's been it for this video. Thank you as always for watching the video all the way until the end. And please do consider subscribing if you're enjoying this type of content. And as always, please remember to include our brothers and sisters in Palestine in your prayers. It's the least that you can do. And of course, take it easy.